I've been brooding about you, Eddie. And equivalent are often said for fans who are anticipating footage from the Venom sequel since rumors circulated of an excellent ball spot. Chaos reigns within the first trailer for Sony Pictures' Venom, Let There Be Carnage, the follow-up to the 2018 hit, Venom, which began Sony's universe of Marvel characters. Director Andy Serkis reunites Tom Hardy, Michelle Williams and Woody Harrelson, who appeared during the primary film's mid-credits scene. For a movie which will see Eddie Brock Venom face off against his greatest comic book nemesis, Clevis Casada Carnage. While the presence of Carnage does signify a much bigger threat for Brock and Venom, it's clear from the trailer that the weather that made the primary film work so well for audiences and gross $856 million worldwide have not been scrapped in favor of delivering a sequel that sacrifices its humor in favor of grim realism. Venom. Let There Be Carnage, due out September 24, has all the promise of being even as unconventional in its tone because the first, while also raising the stakes in ways in which should please both magazine fans and general audiences. One of the four most pleasantly surprising elements of the primary film was its tone, one that played with buddy cop and rom-com conventions, with Sony even releasing a Blu-ray teaser paying homage to later. Venom is additionally a movie that wears its love for single quote 90s Venom comics on its sleeve, and therefore the same seems to be true for its sequel, which sees Kelly Marcel return as screenwriter. As much because the character Venom is taken into account to be a mirrored image of the cool and edgy ear that defined numerous single quote 90s comics, there's many silliness to travel around. Yeah. Venom hunted down Spider-Man on an island and gave poor Mary Jane no shortage of nightmares, but he also sang show tunes and had an insatiable love for chocolate. Two elements present within the latest trailer that sees Eddie and Venom living out an odd couple domestic comedy of errors to the tune of Ella Fitzgerald's Let's Call the Whole Thing Off. Andy Serkis may have appeared like an odd option to some when he was first announced because the director but if there's anyone who knows the way to set free with a character while pushing motion capture to the next level it's circus and although he's certainly better referred to as an actor than a director circus experience as a second unit director on peter jackson's hobbit films certainly proves he can deliver action sequences fans of the genre have come to expect along with his direction on moogly legend of the jungle which was unfortunately lost within the shuffle after being moved to Netflix. Circus has proven to be a filmmaker who knows when to be reverential to the source material and when to require advantage of the liberty a replacement medium can provide. There is a refreshing lack of self-consciousness to the trailer for Venom. Let there be carnage, an equivalent factor that made Tom Hardy climbing into a lobster tank and biting one of the crustaceans' heads off within the first film such a highlight. Venom, Leather Carnage knows it's silly, and owns that factor confidently, while, supported as trailer, still approaching the threats with gravity and emotional sincerity. Venom, Let There Be Carnage looks to be a showcase of Hardy and Harrelson's range, with the actors portraying their human characters and symbiote counterparts. While other magazine adaptations work so hard to convince audiences they ought to be taken entirely seriously at every moment, Venom, let there be carnage aims for top camp. It's not that a method is wrong and therefore the other right, or a case of either, either, to quote Miss Fitzgerald. Rather, it's important to acknowledge what a movie is getting to be and appreciate that there's room for both, and everything in between. After all, as Three Dog Night sings within the trailer, one is that the loneliest number. Eddie Brock's life is certainly getting less lonely within the sequel. If Brock is attempting to be a far better human with the assistance of his symbiote, the unhinged Clevis Cassati will only go to pot through his. Still, as perhaps the sole two people within the world who share the experience of living with a symbiote, it'll be interesting to ascertain how the connection between the two men and their symbiotic counterparts evolve. Harrelson who could also be taking the chance to riff on his psychotic natural-born killer's character, Mickey Knox, certainly seems primed to match Tom Hardy's energy with both actors chewing scenery and appearing to possess the time of their lives. 
and Kasadi's bringing another character familiar to comic readers with him, Shriek, whose Shaker Ventcroft Institute may plant the seeds for a much bigger story down the line. Maximum Carnage. And in Stephen Graham's Patrick Mulligan, who becomes Toxin within the comics, and there's tons of territory left to explore during this symbiote saga. While a Venom film without the Spider-Man connection may have appeared like an odd choice when initially announced, it's clear that the character can certainly thrive on his own without certain tonal limits associated other characters, which is that the great thing about the comics also. Venom are often explored as a one-man reckoning together with his suicidal impulses within the face of cosmic existentialism and fatherhood. As writer Donny Cates has tackled in his phenomenal Venom run, which wraps in June, or it are often about the struggles of finding an honest meal when there's an alien parasite living inside you. Venom, very similar to the symbiote that creates up his being, is elastic and versatile and Venom, let there be carnage looks to permit the contemporary superhero film to stretch itself even more.